back to the channel. Welcome back on this beautiful spring day. We're just getting started with some breakfast and my 12 year old son has surprised us with a simple breakfast. We are just getting back from a staycation, little spring break here and we spent some time in the big city. So I thought today I could share with you my grocery haul that I brought back and we'll do a little bit of tidying around the kitchen and then I want to share with you some beautiful homemaking. We will go through some of the goodies I found at the thrift store and antique store, do a little bit of decorating, and then make a beautiful dinner. Meanwhile, Jared is busy out planting a strawberry patch, and I can't wait to share it all with you guys. Our big bulk grocery haul was done mostly at Sam's Club and a little bit at Trader Joe's. When I am in the city near Trader Joe's, I always take the chance to go and get all of my favorite things, but I just couldn't bear to put away all of these groceries into a dirty refrigerator. So first of all, we are going to clear out the refrigerator and give it a good clean. When I say, oh, we'll just give this a quick cleaning, it always is much, much more than that. And my quick cleaning was more of a thorough clean through the refrigerator, but we all know that it seriously needed a good cleaning. I love it when the fridge smells nice and fresh and clean and it has lots of beautiful, fresh, good foods in it. I'm going to be cleaning the fridge out with my own homemade vinegar solution that I make on the counter with water and vinegar and orange and lemon peels and I'm adding a little bit of Castile soap to it. And I'm going to spray that into the fridge and then just let it sit for a little while and hurry and whip up some sandwiches because it's already lunchtime, if you can believe it. And Jared is off to pick up some strawberry plants. Every year we add new things to our property. We've only been here for close to two years. This year we're really focusing in on our berry patch and we just put together a four feet by 30 feet raised bed for a strawberry patch. We had a neighbor who was willing to give us some large wooden poles to make that bed out of and then we just dug up the dirt on our own property and filled that bed up and Jared found somebody locally that is getting rid of all of their strawberries in their strawberry patch and so he's going to go pick those up and I'm whipping up some sandwiches before he goes and I'm so excited and just in awe of the wonderful miracles that are coming together for a strawberry patch. I'll show you more of the strawberry patch later on in this video so stay tuned. My neighbor likes to remind me that Rome wasn't built in a day. And we're not building Rome, we're just building a farm that we hope extends to generations. <laughs> so much of what we're doing on our little property is investing our time and our efforts and our sweat equity into things that we will not even see bear fruit for a couple of years from now, or maybe even a few years from now. Things like planting new fruit trees, putting in berries, asparagus, rhubarb, all of these wonderful things that we are planting on our property, we won't see bear fruit for quite some time. But I feel like this is the time in our lives to be planting seeds, to be working hard. And then we're also raising four beautiful children. And it very much feels that this is the time to be pruning and growing and planting. And it's hard work, but I feel really blessed for the opportunity to do it. A while back I showed you guys some organizing in the kitchen and I do have labels here in the refrigerator that I write on with a chalk pen and the nice thing about it is you can just wipe them off 
and rewrite your labels if things are changing. And people in my house don't always follow the labels in my refrigerator. I mean, let's just be honest. I don't think anybody does but me, but I love the idea of it and it makes me happy just to see organization trying to happen. (laughs) We make most of the things in our kitchen from scratch and so grocery shopping looks like fruits and vegetables and those main pantry staples like rice and flours and oats. Um, So I try to keep those nice and stocked making notes when they need to be refilled. Um, I do shop a lot from Azure Standard, but in the meantime, in between big orders, I try to keep those filled. I like to bulk up on my pastas from Trader Joe's. I buy lots of macaroni noodles and spaghetti. Um, I try to get a lot when I'm there. You can buy a nice organic or just good pasta from Italy for just a couple of bucks from Trader Joe's. Those are one of the things that are a fairly good price at Trader Joe's. And I also like to grab a few already made spaghetti sauces um, so that my kids can whoop up spaghetti or feel like they can make something in the kitchen as well. We love Tillamook cheese, and that's something that we can only find over at Sam's Club or Costco, so we like to get that. And then when we're at Trader Joe's, I also love to get in on the snacks. There's always some yummy crackers there, and I usually like to indulge in a treat or so, and I got some of these orange dark chocolate candies. And then they also have really great nuts and dried fruit. I usually make most of our snacks from scratch. So the problem with getting some snacks from the store now and then is that they only last for a day or so. They just don't last very long. I also picked up some bulk potatoes and onions because I was really just scraping by. But I'm going to put aside some of these older potatoes and put them in a bag and put them in the dark closet to see if I can sprout some of them for planting this spring. I love just really digging in to see what we have left and using up what there is and avoiding wasting food if you can. So we're going to use some of these older sweet potatoes for dinner tonight and I'm going to pop them in the hot oven and just let them cook until I'm ready to make dinner. As the homemaker of the home, we're always taking inventory of what needs to be bought, what we have, what needs to be used. and just really cooking according to what is in the kitchen and what needs to be eaten first and um, making sure that those basic needs are always supplied. And that, my friends, feels like a full-time job. Why is it that I think that you would like this? This is simple gifts. Oh, is it a record? It's a record. In our minds... Yeah, each of us is a singer. We may not be able to vocally translate the perfect sounds we can hear inside our heads, but each of us has a private voice that sings out in clear, pure tones the songs we have inside us. When we are out and about, I love to explore new thrift stores and see what there is to find. And I was able to pop into a couple of my favorite antique and thrift stores while we were out and about. This is a cute antique store in a small town. And I just loved these little pottery made little dishes here and thought that this beautiful green color would be great for spring. So I snatched this. You're going to see this later on in the video. And it's just so fun to rummage through all the things and see what kind of treasures there are to find. But I do make it a goal to bring one bag of donations every time I go to a thrift store. And it's just a good habit to be into keeping the load light. I shared with you guys in an earlier video um, some goals I had for this new year. And one of them was to keep a donation bag by the front door. And I've actually just been carrying out that donation bag straight out to the car. Um, 
every week. And while we're out running errands or going out and about, I like to make sure to donate it. But I loved seeing all the spring-inspired things that there were to find. And I was really drawn to anything that had berries on it or some of those spring colors. And I just had to show you guys these Easter eggs that were hand-painted. Aren't they so beautiful? This particular thrift store was a little pricey for my taste. And it made me so sad because it used to be so affordable. So I only picked up a few things. For the camera, here's all my family who loves to go thrift shopping. Put your thrift shopping face on. Have you ever tried to go shopping with all of your kids? It's a super real challenge, but I was lucky to have seen what I saw and looking back, I almost wish I would have gotten a few more of these things. I was kind of drawn to some of these clay made things. I was able to pick a few things up from the jewelry counter that were 50% off. These earrings are made from clay and hand painted and I thought they were just adorable. And I think I'm gonna send them off to my best girlfriend who loves to make pottery. And I found a few other things. If you know what this antique is, would you put it down in the comments below? I'm not quite sure what it is, but Jared picked it up for me because he knows I love antiques. And it was a gift from him, so I thought I would show this to you as well. And then I did pick up these pottery made little dishes. I think they're made to look like a grape leaf. Um, if you have any thoughts on this, write down in the comments below, but I just love them. I wish I had a few more of them. And then I did pick up this vase or a pitcher that has berries on the side. It's so beautiful. And today I'm going to be putting some flowers in it. And then I picked up this little honey dish, which is meant to put honey in it. And it has the cute little honeycomb stick in it. And we're also going to be using this today and putting some honey butter in it. When I'm in Trader Joe's, they always have the most beautiful fresh flowers. So I picked up a few things from there and I thought we could make a beautiful spring arrangement. If you have a wide vessel that you're putting flowers in, you can use some tape to make a grid to hold all the flowers in place. Or you could also use some chicken wire to hold all of your stems in place.
It's true that the best things in life are simple and the most valuable things in life are free. And I think true love is definitely displayed in someone planting you a berry patch because they know that you would love it. So thank you, Jared, for the strawberry patch. After cleaning the fridge and putting away all those groceries and doing a little bit of beautiful homemaking, I'm ready to make some dinner for all my hungry kids who are out there planting strawberries. I'm going to get started with making a spatchcock chicken today. I've sharpened my knife and it's ready to cut this chicken. To prepare our spatchcock chicken, you just cut the spine out of the chicken. You can also use a sharp pair of kitchen scissors as well. Once you've completely cut the spine out of the body of the chicken, then you can flip it over and just flatten all the pieces down and that way it cooks nice and evenly on the pan and it cooks much faster. I'm also going to save these chicken spines and put them in a Ziploc bag and put them in the freezer so that we can make some chicken stock out of them later. I put two large spatchcock chickens here on the pan and I'm going to season them with this yummy chicken spice rub that I got from Thrive, um, some garlic powder, and this one seasoning that my family's obsessed with called Slap Yo Mama. <laughs> and um, it's just basically has some chili and smoked paprika, I think, and onion powder and garlic powder. And it makes it a little bit spicy. So we're going to oil these chickens up and spice them up. Add some lemon to these and they're going to be delicious. I also added some garlic cloves and some fresh rosemary and some sliced lemons and it just looks beautiful. I'm going to line the rest of the cookie sheet, there's not much space left, with some colorful carrots that I picked up from the store and it just looks beautiful. These are the things that just make my happy homemaking spirit just sing. And then we're gonna pop it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 35 to 45 minutes, depending on how big of a bird you have. Just keep an eye on it. And when there are no pink juices coming out of your chicken, then it's ready. But it, the chicken is nice and juicy and full of flavor and so delicious. Are you sensing a theme here today? Berries are on my mind. So I want to make some strawberry shortcakes for dessert and I wish they were fresh strawberries coming out of my new garden bed, but that will have to be someday. So I'm gonna start by chopping up my strawberries, putting them in a bowl, and I actually forgot to sprinkle them with sugar. But if you can sprinkle your diced strawberries beforehand with sugar, then it pulls all the juices out of the strawberries and all the sugar dissolves and makes a really delicious strawberry topping. The recipe that I'm using today for the shortcake is actually from a Joanna Gaines cookbook and I'm just using her Jojo's biscuit recipe that she uses for biscuits and gravy and also for her strawberry shortcake as well. And it's just a really standard, delicious biscuit recipe. 
I'll make sure to put all the ingredients down below um, and a link to this cookbook as well. But it has lots of butter, which makes the biscuits nice and buttery and flaky. And while the strawberries are out on the table, they are being devoured <laughs> by little fingers. Everyone loves it when fresh strawberries and fresh berries are out. I was able to pull out our chicken. And now I'm going to finish up these strawberry shortcakes. This is something that you really could make ahead of time after you've mixed all the ingredients into a dough. You can throw it out onto the counter and finish mixing it by hand. You don't want to work this dough too much. You want to keep it nice and tender and flaky by not overworking the dough. When I'm making this recipe for breakfast for biscuits and gravy, I just prepare this dough the night before and then wrap it up in saran wrap and put it in the refrigerator. And then I finish the process the next morning. I just flatten this out into a rectangle and then I fold one side on top of the other and repeat this process a few more times. And that way I'm forming layers into my biscuit. So there's these nice flaky buttery layers that you're going for. One thing that I love about these strawberry shortcakes is that they're not super sweet. This biscuit recipe is buttery and salty, but it's not a very sweet biscuit. And then you top it off with some fresh whipped cream. And I always add a little bit of powdered sugar to that and your strawberries, which have been soaking with sugar. And it's just a really nice light buttery treat. And then I'm going to be topping these off with some cream, brushing some cream on here so they have a nice golden look to them, and then sprinkling them with some coarse sugar. And then they are ready to go in the oven. I'm finally getting around to putting sugar on my strawberries. One new thing that we've done here on the farm this year is hatched our own chicks. We have an incubator that we put some eggs in and it's been really fun to watch this process. So we've hatched a few chicks and we have a few more that are still in the incubator that we are waiting to hatch. And what an experiment this is, but it's really, really rewarding to see the full circle happen right here before our eyes on the farm. With these sweet potatoes, I'm just going to put them in my iron skillet and mash them all up. I've got the oven going nice and hot and so I'm going to top this with some butter and some cinnamon and brown sugar and just let that sugar caramelize on top of these sweet potatoes and put them in the hot oven for just a quick and delicious sweet side to our chicken. Jared has been working most of the day in our berry patches. Our goal is to have a few lines of berries out here, blackberries, raspberries, boysenberries, um, maybe some grapes, and just keep adding to them each year with new starts and new runners, and hopefully someday have a really great berry patch that we can make jams and jellies and just invite friends over to pick berries with us. And it just feels like a great way to kick off spring by having some strawberry shortcake 
and looking forward to berries to come. I want to thank you for joining me here today for this spring day of homemaking. And if you've made it this far, I invite you to press the subscribe button. And if you haven't realized, it's completely free to subscribe to a YouTube channel. I won't be sending you anything. You won't have to pay for anything, but you will simply see more videos popping up on your YouTube feed from the Pioneer Home. So if you haven't already, come join our family here on the Pioneer Home as we are restoring home, family, and spirit. I make a new video each week. Uploads are on Monday, and I hope to see you next time. Love you lots.